Well, I think we've been mainly focused on you know acquiring hotels with a leisure component in the business mix. So that was very important for us in terms of uh, because we think you know the visibility is a bit better, the visibility with regards to the recovery. And you know we can see it now. I mean, these hotels are really doing very, very well. Um, is that going to change over time? I think so. Uh, I think we will uh, be looking at hotels maybe with maybe a bit more of a corporate or a uh, you know meeting component. But uh, for the moment, I think that's uh, that's still our strategy. Yeah, I think for the moment we still focus mainly on the on the. To have a, a certain percentage of leisure, and that's why our next market, where we want to be active, is, um, is Spain, which is also more like a leisure market. I would say. But we can also look at, um, at more urban locations. Well, the short answer is no. So, <laughs> no. no, of course, you know. Uh, distressed hotels was always a part of our strategy, but it wasn't like the main pillar of our strategy. We always said we have, you know, different teams we will work on. Uh, yes, if there's, you know, hotels with distressed pricing, we, there are a lot of distressed hotels, but not a lot of hotels with distressed pricing. So if there is opportunities out there, we, we will look into that, obviously. But um, very quickly we. Um, we also uh, switched to one of our other teams, which was like, okay, how can we add value by changing the operator, changing the brand, and uh, you know that's what we're doing in Manchester with the, uh, the Cubic, and um, which is now managed by Hamilton Hotel Partners under a Yotel franchise. Well, we definitely hope that there will be a bit more um, opportunities on the market because the number of opportunities is very limited and you have a lot of you know, you know colleagues of mine chasing the same opportunities so which is not helping of course in terms of, in terms of pricing but um, uh, yeah we definitely want to see more and more opportunities in the market and we'll see. Yeah, well, that's a that's a tough question because you know in the meantime when you do your underwriting, um, about a year ago it was all about how fast can we come back to 2019 or any previous peak levels. Now, comparing your underwriting today or you know the situation today with 2019, it, you just can't do that anymore because your costs are completely uh, different. But also in some of the markets you already are suffering. So so, which is partially compensating for the increase in, um, in, in costs um, in the short term, or you know, who knows until when you know, this is going to continue. So you have to, you have to, um, I think, in your underwriting, have a little buffer in some of these costs. But the main point is definitely to think about very early in the stage, to think about you know how can we reduce energy consumption. So that's a perfect fit with you know whatever we're doing in the ESG anyway. So. Um, how can we have uh, a labor um, structure which is a little bit more, I would say, uh, crisis uh, uh, robust? Um, you know, all of these questions you have to ask yourself very early in the in the. Uh, Definitely, I think, I think the short, in the short term, so during the pandemic, the role of the asset manager was really to protect the bottom line, obviously, right? And to work with the operator to say, okay, where can we, you know, you know, save anything in order to, to stop the cash burn, because that was what was happening. In the meantime, I also think that a lot of asset, asset managers um, have... Uh, a lot more knowledge, you know, granular knowledge, knowledge about, about PL going forward. And he's now going to be very focused on, um, you know, which costs are coming back, do we really need this? And it's not about cutting costs, it's about, you know, can we use these resources in another way? Because I think that's, um, so, and I think that gives another dimension, you know, for, for, for many asset managers as well, that they have now a lot more knowledge, granular knowledge about um, PNL going forward, but in the end, it's all about working together with the operator and uh, you know trying to align interests as much as possible. 
and, and create value for ourselves. <laughs>